Julian Morrow to the returns counter. Do you know what your rights are? You have the right to remain silent. One of the advantages of being arrested. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Is that the police have to read you your rights. You understand? Yes. But as a consumer, no one reads you your rights. And many shoppers are left with the wrong impression. Signs like this, for example. Or this, or this, or this. They're bullshit and they're illegal. Warning, consumer law does not give you the right to deface signs, even if they're bullshit. The point is, it doesn't matter what the dodgy sign says. It doesn't matter what the dodgy fine print you're never going to read says. And it doesn't matter what the dodgy sales assistant says. Hey! It's true. If you buy goods in Australia, you've got rights under the Australian consumer law. And those rights are exactly the same, whether you buy from a big chain store, a small retailer, a second hand store, or even an op shop. But they don't apply to private sales. So you're OK, Harvey. It's Norman. You can read yourself your rights at consumerlaw.gov.au. Now, I'm the kind of guy who loves doing that. But if you're not, here are the basics about returning goods in Australia. You have the right to return a product if it's not as described. And that's as described on the packet or by the person who sold it to you. You have the right to return something if it's not fit for its purpose. And that includes the usual purpose, but also if you conveyed a different purpose to the f**kwit who sold the product to you and it's not fit for that purpose, you can return it then too. You also have the right to return a product if it's not of acceptable quality. Now, what's acceptable quality? This is where it gets interesting. What's acceptable quality isn't about you. It's about you, the consumer. What do you think is acceptable? Actually, it's not about you. It's about what the reasonable consumer, fully acquainted with the goods, would regard as acceptable. Do you mind? Anyway, a product is only acceptable if it looks okay, if it's safe, and if it's durable. What durable means depends on the sort of product it is. There are lots of products, fridges, freezers, washing machines, that we keep for a long time. And for them, reasonable durability should be measured in years, even decades, not weeks or months. For example, you'd expect a candlestick like this to last for many years. So if it fell apart after, say, two years, you can still return it. You've really let yourself go. You can't return this without the original packaging. That's wrong. The consumer law says you don't need the original packaging to return something. You don't have the receipt. <laughs> well, I don't need the receipt. I'm right, you know. There's no law that says you need a receipt. You just need to be able to prove your purchase. And there's plenty of ways of doing that, whether it's credit card records, product serial numbers, or maybe even social media. <laughs> and just say that somebody's being difficult. Remember, it's the consumer's choice where you take things back. You can return them to the manufacturer if you want, but you can also return it to whoever you bought it from. The store can't fob you off to the manufacturer. And they can't charge you for it either. In fact, even saying there's a fee is illegal. You could go to jail, Dad. Actually, it's just a fine. Shh. Even better, if you get something as a gift, you've got exactly the same consumer rights as if you purchased it yourself. So long as you can show where it was bought, you can return your gift without a receipt, even without the original packaging. Now, there are some limits in the consumer law to spoil your fun. You don't have the right to return goods if an unreasonable amount of time has passed. 
don't have the right to return goods if you damage them yourself. Ah! And most disappointingly of all, you don't have a clear right to exchange goods or get a refund if you've just changed your mind, unless the shop's policy allows it. And some retailers will even do it out of the goodness of their heart. So it's always worth asking. But back to the cool stuff in the consumer law. If you're returning something and you think it's so unacceptable that you wouldn't have bought it in the first place, then it's your choice, not the store's, whether you get a refund or a replacement. Provided you're a reasonable person. Would you shut up? That's not very reasonable. As well as your money back, you've also got a right to compensation for any reasonably foreseeable loss. That compensation can include the cost of transport for returning the goods. Yep, I know, reasonable cost. And if the cost of returning it's significant, which it could be for something like a fridge, then the supplier's got to collect it at their expense. But remember, if the problem isn't a major one, it's the seller's choice whether to refund or exchange. So you're at their mercy. And one last cool thing. Under the consumer law, any statement made by a product manufacturer or supplier when they're trying to sell it to you constitutes an explicit guarantee. So when you're shopping, you've got rights and anything they say can and will be held against them. Getting faulty products and bad service can be annoying. Sometimes it's tempting to lash out. Up you get. The consumer law is there to protect you, and you have the right not to remain silent. Shitty service is annoying, but it's not giving you the right to commit murder. Allegedly. Johnson and Johnson Sorbeline. Baby Sorbeline. With 10% glycerin. Water, glycerin, petrolatum. And we can't be bothered reading the rest, but it's the same. 495 for 750 mils. For 500 mils? The reason this one's more expensive? The active ingredient is the word baby. If retailers were like Google. Hi, I'm... Bored? Yours? On top of the world? Uh, I'm looking... For you. For a miracle? No, sorry. I want... To break free. Queen, Freddie Mercury, watch the video on YouTube now. No. I'm looking for a white shirt for work. You feeling lucky? What? No. We have over 431 million white shirts to choose from. Try this Reebok shirt, ma'am. Uh, can I try that one? Maybe try this one first. I don't want the sponsored shirt. I want that one. Hey, have you seen Huffington Post's 10 most epic white shirts? No, I just want that shirt. Okay. Would you like me to remember your details? No! Thanks. Do you want to tell everybody that you know that you just bought a white shirt? No! Do you want a white shirt? You look like you want a white shirt. Do you need miracle diet pills to wear your white shirt? Have you seen BuzzFeed's most outrageous white shirt? Oh, Try it for cuck white shirt now. One thing Australia is good at, one area in which we dominate, it's being lazy. <laughs> and if there's one industry that knows it, lucky. insurance. It's insurance. It's a real hassle trying to decide which company to go with in the first place. This one covers hail damage, but that one has a lower excess, and that one provides a free hire car if you have a prank. I never want to have to go through this again. And insurers know that when they send out their annual renewal notices, <laughs> most of us won't bother checking whether we can get a better deal. Oh, I'll open it later. 
we just assume that if we've been with the same company for a while, they'll look after us? Where would we get an idea like that from? Loyalty's a wonderful thing. We like to reward your loyalty. So the longer you remember, the more you can save. What they really reward is switching. Switch now for a free Geo Platinum upgrade. Switch to NRMA and we'll beat your car renewal price by 10%. Switch your comprehensive car insurance online to save $100. While excluding their loyal customers from those deals. Offer does not apply to existing AMI car insurance policy holders. What's more, they often slug people who don't query their renewal notices with a lazy tax, an invisible surcharge on consumer apathy. Uh, could someone preach you this for me? Take James here, for example. He's a lazy tax dodger. Hey. Sorry. Someone who dodged the lazy tax. That's better. NRMA quoted James $360 for his insurance renewal. That's $92 more than they were going to charge a new customer online. Bill Suncorp renewal notice was $66 more than a new customer, who'd also get a $50 discount online. And Greta's renewal notice from Allianz was $77 more expensive than if she reapplied online. What a bunch of... Uh... ...souls. The good news is it's usually pretty easy to get insurers to waive the lazy tax. All it takes is a phone call. When Frank's QBE premium jumped to $612, he gave them a call and... Then they knocked $52 off. And later, another $70 when I told them I was leaving. When Mark's Yui house insurance jumped 12%... I told them I'd got a cheaper quote elsewhere, and without even asking to see it, they gave me a loyalty discount. We asked each of these insurance companies... Why don't you offer existing customers the best possible premium on renewal notices? And Yui said... It's a loaded question. Yeah, we do that. But then they said... Risk and profile changes may result in a further premium adjustment. Yes, if the customer's profile changes sometime between picking up the phone and threatening to leave. Suncorp admitted... We often have special introductory offers in place to attract new business. But added... It's about a lot more than the price. They say service is important, and maybe so. But when it comes to insurance, I think money is pretty important too. And NRMA denied everything, saying they offered renewing customers the best possible premium based on their risk profile. Is that true, James? No. And it's not just insurance companies that charge the lazy tax. Phone companies do it, internet companies, banks, gyms, electricity and gas. Virtually all ongoing service providers do it. I just can't be asked going through the details. Hmm? Oh. Uh, so the message is clear. When you get a renewal notice, shop around. It could save you hundreds. Guilty mum, I know when baby won't sleep, it's not Mother Nature's fault, it's my fault. Which is why my baby's routine has all the sleep aids Mother Nature left out. First, there's Sleep Sheep. The mother's calming heartbeat sound is definitely more calming than my heartbeat. Then I add the calming lights of the Twilight Turtle. I hope she's not epileptic. Then I liberally spray pharmaceutical grade lavender oil, which helps create a calming ambience for settling babies. Scientific evidence suggests that other scientific studies on lavender aren't right. And since every mum could do with a hand getting baby to sleep, that's exactly what I bought, cos it's proven that babies sleep better with the Zaki Infant Hand Pillow. And when none of that works, 
I bring out the big guns. Because $100 is a small price to pay for clinically proven sleep enhancement technology. And $29.95 is another small price to pay for sounds created by world-leading doctors in sleep. I don't understand. I followed the Johnson's baby bedtime routine to a T. I bought the bedtime bubble bath. I did the massage with bedtime oil. I rubbed in the bedtime lotion. As a guilty mum, of course I did. The mildness of its effect is clinically proven. Maybe it's her bed. I considered this koala hammock. But I just couldn't go past the perfect sleep solution. It doesn't just save my sanity, it's also excellent for easing flatulence. And it's perfectly safe. Of course, as a guilty mum, I never admit defeat. But sometimes I do change rooms. So when baby's back in our room, I've got a sidecar crib for our bed. It's not a guaranteed resting place for her. But it's great for an iPad. Extended warranties are the McDonald's fries of the retail world. Would you like an extended warranty with that? Whether you're buying a TV or a toaster, chances are you'll be offered one. Oh, come on, mate. A choice survey found 65% of people offered an extended warranty bought one, and a third of them felt pressured into it. And, much like those upsold McDonald's fries, extended warranties can be bad for you. Will you stop that? The story's simple. You buy a TV for $2,000, which comes with a 12-month manufacturer's warranty, and you're offered an extended warranty for three years for $200. At first, it seems like a good deal for such an expensive item, especially when the salesperson is so persuasive. And there's a queue behind you. But when you try to use your extended warranty, you're told about complex terms and conditions that prevent many standard repairs. And you realise it was a waste of money. Consumers are already protected by the Australian Consumer Law for as long as the product can be reasonably expected to last, which for a TV should be at least two years, meaning many warranties are paying for a right that's already available for free. But only 13% of consumers are aware of their rights, so they are easily taken advantage of, leading to calls for extra protections. Even if these warranties weren't already covered by Australian consumer law. And not everything is. Time out. Most consumer electronic goods have what's called a bathtub curve of failure. Now, this doesn't mean they'll fail if you put them in the bathtub, although they will. It means most of these products will either fail early when they're still covered by the manufacturer's warranty or they'll fail late when your extended warranty has already run out. The bathtub curve shows why retailers love extended warranties so much. They cover the product in the period when it's least likely to fail. A great example of this is second-hand cars. Your warranty could cost more than this shit box is worth in 12 months. Hey! Sorry. Especially when second-hand cars are covered by Australian consumer law anyway. Thanks, guys. Sure, enforcing those rights may be difficult. That's why people buy warranties. But those paid-for warranties can be just as hard to enforce. The National Warranty Company is terrible. Harvey Norman is terrible. We bought a second-hand car. I bought a robot vacuum cleaner. Got two years into a five-year warranty. I got 18 months into what they said was a five-year warranty. When the air conditioning condenser failed. When our vacuum stopped sucking. All sweet, I thought. It's covered. It's covered, except... When I contacted them. When I lodged the claim. They tell me that I'm in breach of the warranty conditions. Heard nothing for two weeks. Called four times and I eventually found I'd been given store credit for $400 when a robot vacuum cost $5.99. Then they told me that my warranty didn't cover the repair, only the value of replacement, and that my vacuum couldn't be repaired 
or replaced. Geez, I thought the National Warranty Company was bad. It is bad, but I'll fix it. No, you won't. They're horrible. Before shelling out for a warranty, a good question to ask is, what does this extended warranty give me that I don't already get for free under the Australian Consumer Law? Seriously, ask this question. And you can find it here on the checkout website. Because the last thing you need is another nasty surprise. Hey, Lynx! As a massive piss nut with a bastard hangover, I was epic stoked when I face landed on a shelf of anti hangover deodorant body spray. You bloody beauty! I totally needed something to blow away the cobwebs, leaving me ready to punch my day in the face instead of punching my face into a bus stop, which was my plan. And it bloody worked! If by blow away the cobwebs, you mean all my mates who blew right away when I started smelling like a friggin' fruit basket. I don't know what the hell a fragrance pyramid is, but even a mad bastard like me can't face punch the day with grapefruit and musk and patchouli and freaking aldehydes. What does that even mean, you mad smelly scientist gobshites? I paid more than six bucks to anti my hard ass hangover, not to smell like a wanker in a candle shop. By the way, Lynx dicks, you also failed on another promise. The can told me this plus this equaled me turning into a sexy bikini babe, which I was totally looking forward to because YOLO! But at least there was one promise you actually delivered on. I felt heaps less irritated when I stopped using that shite! Thanks for sweet F.A. Pete! You, sir? Yeah, I'd like some toothpaste, please. Well, what kind of protection are you after? Protection? Yes, we've got cavity protection, maximum cavity protection, fluoride protection, effective fluoride protection, sensitive multi-protection, 24-7 sensitivity protection, 12-hour antibacterial protection, enamel protect protection, superior protection, superior protection with a fresh stripe, the amazing signs of triple protection because your mouth is amazing, or just full protection. I just want some regular toothpaste. <laughs> we don't have regular, only great regular. Great regular. Yes, and that comes in original mint, spearmint, cool mint, fresh mint, blue mint, crystal mint, or sensational mint. I, I just want clean teeth. Well, do you want whitening, pure whitening, advanced whiten, white strips, baking soda and peroxide, or a new dimension of whitening for a spectacular smile? Then there's Novamin, Pronamel, Enamolock, MicroClean, Crystal Pro, Argan, Triple Action, Deep Action, Multi Action, 5 in 1 Action, Dissolvable Mini Breath Strips, Microactive Foam, Microactive Foaming Bubbles, or Isoactive Foaming Gel. Isoactive? Yes, that comes in Fresh Impact or Ice Impact. You know, it's pretty much all gibberish. Hey, it's Dr. Mark Shifter, Associate Professor of Oral Medicine at the University of Sydney. The important thing is the fluoride, the rest is just marketing. So they're all the same? Pretty much all the same. What a headache. Do you want gel caps, liquid caps, easy action, or fast action? We all want food that's low in fat and low in sugar and good for us. And we're finding it everywhere. Sweets are 99% fat free. Sweets never had fat. Chips have no artificial colours or flavours. Just heaps of other bad shit. And if you're looking for something that's low in sugar and a good source of protein and dietary fibre, try these pork crackles. It's practically a health food. Mmm, crackling. I'm sorry, sir, but you have diabetes. But all there is is low sugar, high protein, crackling. We say we're trying to eat healthier, but the number of obese Aussies has increased by 50% since 1995. When I bought this. Why is it so? Good question, black and white guy. Maybe it's because companies use packaging to make unhealthy products seem healthier. In the olden days, manufacturers had more freedom with what they said about their products. Cigarettes protect your throat. Radium gives you sex power. Unfortunately, sir, you have cancer of the everything. But on the plus side, your sex power is off the charts. Today, the Food Standards Code is supposed to prevent dodgy claims. Terms like low fat, source of fibre and light are meant to mean something, but they can still be misleading. It all depends what you're comparing it with. This light ham has the same amount of everything as this regular ham. And this light, 25% less fat corned beef has the same amount of fat as this one. The good news is the code says when a product makes a comparative claim like this, it's got to show what food it's been compared to. 
so it's worth checking the fine print. This high brown wheat bix has twice the fibre per serve of regular wheat bix, but only if you eat more of it. The bad news is that we tend to rely on the health claims on the front of the box and not turn around to the real nutritional information on the back. So you can sit down to a bowl of high fibre cereal with milk, no added sugar juice and this low fat yoghurt and that healthy sounding breakfast has you well on the way to three quarters of your recommended daily intake of sugar. And remember that those daily intake percentages are based on the average adult. How many adults do you know who have Fruit Loops for breakfast? But it's a good source of loops. The Food Standards Code also lists over 200 pre-approved general health claims that products can use. Even chewing gum can say it contributes to the reduction of oral dryness. Gum. The claims on these products sound great, but they're largely irrelevant. Unless you're actually deficient in vitamins and minerals, and most Australians aren't, you're unlikely to notice any benefits. But they do help enrich the companies that sell them. And while the Food Standards Code covers specific claims, you can still throw vague, healthy sounding words on the pack and hope that people don't realise they're meaningless. Like enliven juice for revitalising green goodness. This man's green goodness levels are crashing. Get me 50 cc's of enliven. Product names are even less reliable. Fresh, natural, pure and healthy are often used when naming a food. But there's no nutrition test when trademarking a name. Marketers love health and nutrient claims because of something called the halo effect. Take the word organic. If you put it on a label, people are more likely to think that the food is tastier, lower in calories, lower in fat, higher in fibre than if it didn't have the word organic on it. And it works for other claims too. If you think that something's healthy in one way, you'll wrongly assume it's healthy in other ways too. Once a product has the health halo, you're more likely to buy it, underestimate its calories and eat more of it. And for food companies, that's the real miracle. Even without any claims, packaging can still make us think the products are healthy. Shown to otherwise identical packets, most people think the one with the landscape imagery is healthier. See-through packaging can make us think of products more nutritious. And even the colour of the nutrition panel can influence our estimate of calories. We're nutritional racists! Next they'll be saying the farmers on the packets aren't real farmers. Good dog. So if healthy eating is important for you, make sure you read the nutrition panel because you want a healthy product, not a healthy packet. And remember that front of pack claims are often just clever marketing dressed up as healthy food. Most of the things that are good for you don't have packaging at all. A little bit of clarity can go a long way. Oh my God, all these claims are bullshit. That's not even a real dog. Well, this stuff really works.